In the last episode, we talked a little bit about the different types of variables, whether they be integers, strings, or cares. This time, we'll delve further into what happens when we actually define a variable, how we reference them, and how we can manipulate them for our programs. To start, let's go over what happens when we define a variable. Now, when we write a line of code which initializes a variable and that code is executed, the computer essentially creates a little space in memory that stores your variable name and its contents so that it can be referenced later. Think of this as if you had a storage facility and you make a new cardboard box labeled name and inside of it you put a piece of paper with the word null pointer exception on it. Now, anytime you wanted to know the contents of your name box, you could simply look inside and see that it has the contents null pointer exception. This is what the computer does, except the storage facility is memory, the box is a variable, and the contents of the box are whatever the variable is set to be equal to. Now, programming languages allow us to do some pretty cool things with these boxes that we've created. For example, let's say we created a second variable, channel name, and instead of setting it equal to null pointer exception, we instead set it equal to our already created name variable. We usually do this to save space in memory and to simplify code. This doesn't create a space in memory for this new variable, it simply points to the same location of memory that we have already created for the name variable. Going back to our storage facility example, this would be as if instead of creating a whole new box labeled channel name and storing a sheet of paper with the word null pointer exception on it, we instead simply added another label below the name label entitled channel name. Now we have two variables, but they both point towards the same contents, that being the string null pointer exception. Variables can also be updated throughout your code. For example, let's say you had an age variable, and inside it was the integer 17. Then let's say you celebrated a birthday and wanted to update your age. All you would have to do is reference the variable and set it equal to whatever new integer you want the variable to hold, in this case, 18. This would be the same as having a box labeled age with a sheet of paper reading 17 inside of it, and then taking that sheet of paper out erasing 17, replacing it with 18, and then placing it back in the box. Doing this, we are able to easily update the contents of our variables throughout the code as things dynamically shift. For example, let's say you're making an RPG or a role-playing game, and your character had stats such as attack, defense, mana, etc. As the game progressed, you could continuously update the variables so that the player could get more and more powerful the further along that they went through the game. All you would need to do is simply keep grabbing that box from your storage facility, erasing and replacing the numbers on the piece of paper, and then continue along with your code. You just have to remember, these variables are nothing more than places in memory in which a certain value is stored. So we can easily update the numbers and their place will remain constant. After a code has run its course, the place in memory is deleted until you run the code again and the program dedicates space for the variable again. Each time you run the code, you're essentially creating new boxes in your storage facility, and when the code ends or terminates after all of the lines are completed, you destroy all the boxes to save space and make room. Another interesting thing you can do with variables is add them, subtract them, multiply them, and even divide them. Now this mostly only works for integer and float variables, as multiplying and dividing strings really doesn't make too much sense. But if you were making a calculator app and you stored the first number that the user entered as num1 and the second as num2, you could then multiply num1 and num2 together and either print them or store them in an entirely new variable entitled result. This allows you to keep track of which numbers are which and what's going on in your program, which can be very useful when it comes to debugging. Now, while you cannot subtract, multiply, or divide strings, you are able to add them together. Let's say you had a string, string1, with the contents hello, and a string2 with the contents bro. You could add string1 and string2 together to create a string that had the contents hello bro, either storing it in a third variable or printing it out. The last topic we'll be covering today is the naming of variables, which may seem odd, but it's extremely important when trying to debug your code, so we'll be covering it today. Variables must be one continuous string, and so if you wanted to make a variable that stored the player score, you'd have to find some way to combine the words, as you can't make an integer of player score with a space between the two words. 
All programmers have their own conventions when it comes to naming variables, but the one that we will be using on this channel is called camel case, which is the process of not capitalizing the first word of your variable, but capitalizing every word that follows it. Going back to the player score example, the variable would be called player score, with the P in player not capitalized and the S in score capitalized. This allows us to easily identify each word and becomes really useful for long variable names, such as the player score before final boss. Whereas if we just type it out completely, it would be really confusing as the player score before the final boss. This will help a ton when you start to find bugs in your code and need to quickly scan your program to figure out which variables are not performing like they're supposed to and what's going on with your code. Next episode, we'll be covering conditional statements and how we compare things in programs. If you like this video, consider subscribing and check out the rest of the videos in this series in the playlist linked to the right. Thanks for watching.